Have you ever heard someone say producers that use samples aren't talented or sampling is lazy? Some people believe that sampling is stealing from other artists or that it demonstrates a lack of creativity. I think some rap records have done that where they've sampled pieces of like what Van Halen and Little Riff. I think that's wrong because that's, I think that's plagiarism. I'll be the first one to admit that I once had this mindset too, until I learned how significant sampling is in music, specifically in hip hop. But to understand the significance of sampling, we must first go back to the origins of hip-hop. Sampling has actually been around for a long time, in the sense that musicians have always been borrowing ideas from other musicians. Every genre has evolved by taking elements of one genre and putting a different spin on it. Hip-hop originated in the Bronx, New York, back in the 1970s. At the time, there was a lot of turmoil in the Bronx, so residents would throw parties in an attempt to kill time. At these parties, there would be rhyming, DJing, graffitiing, and dancing. These would become the four major components of hip-hop, although as time went on and graffitiing and dancing would die off in popularity, especially due to the difficulty to monetize the two, DJing and rhyming would be the two main components that would stick around. In modern times, this would translate to a rapper and producer. DJ was short for disc jockey, which was a person that would utilize a turntable to play music. This is where sampling would come into play. A large reason in the usage of turntables was the lack of access to instruments. DJs would utilize turntables to catch a drum break from one song and layer it with different instruments and melodies to create another. They would do all this live, creating music out of music. DJ Cool Herc, one of the first hip-hop DJs, began isolating the percussion instruments in funk songs with his turntable, creating what are now known as breakbeats. And what he did was with two copies of the, of the same record, in the most basic of ways with the equipment available at the time, was to just repeat that part of the record. So that would have been nothing more sophisticated really at that point in time than just playing out that section, repeat it over from the other side of the, from the, from the next turntable. Once the rhythm of the breakbeat was established, DJs started injecting elements and melodies from other genres such as rock, metal, funk, pop, R&B, and many more genres. This is what makes hip hop so unique is its fusion with other genres that stems from the turntable. And sampling isn't just for melodies or drums. DJs would sample random sounds, vocals, instruments, and pretty much anything else. Samples could be looped throughout an entire song or only used for a second. One of the most popular artists to sample at the time was James Brown, especially his album Funky Drummer, which was one of the most sampled projects of all time. People would sample his famous drums or his vocals. I just started playing a beat, something simple, and everybody joined in. And then Brown came in and put the lyrics to it, and it was called Funky Drummer. Next thing I know, all the rap artists was using it to uh, the sampler. It's also important to remember that sampling is done in every genre as well. It just isn't a core component of every genre like it is in hip hop. For example, the famous Amen break from the song Amen Brother by the Winstons has been used in countless electronic songs, rock songs, pop songs, and of course, hip hop songs. Then in the 1980s, portable digital samplers were invented and made sampling much easier. Popular devices such as the Akai MPC samplers were revolutionary for hip hop. It was much cheaper than a bunch of instruments or a turntable, making it much more accessible to many more people. This device changed the future of hip hop and music forever. It just doesn't seem quite fair. You know, because it really is stealing. Because of the rapid popularization of the sampler, copyright infringement in terms of sampling was a new issue that artists had to consider. Since the invention of the sampler, copyright issues in regards to sampling have been affecting hip hop. Originally, sampling was used in an innocent and fun way, with DJs mixing songs together and people rhyming over them for fun. Think about how you and your friends may freestyle over songs or beats you hear on the radio. However, some people didn't find this so fun and instead thought of it as theft. De La Soul and the Turtles are a great example of sampling sampling issues. De La Soul sampled from the song You Showed Me by the Turtles for a brief one minute filler track called Transmission Live from Mars. The case was settled outside of court but still cost De La Soul some money, and it really demonstrated how sampling could cost an artist. Ironically enough, the Turtles most popular song was a cover of another song, which is totally legal. However, the case that would make one of the largest impacts on copyright and sampling would be Grand Upright Music versus Warner Bros Records. This was the first ever sample case that was brought to court. The artist Gilbert O'Sullivan was suing Biz Markey for sampling his song Alone Again Naturally. At the time, this case was huge, and the court ruled that sampling without permission is copyright infringement, which would make sampling in hip hop much more complicated. To this day, sampling still requires clearances. I'm sure we've all had to wait extra long for songs or albums because of samples needing to be cleared, or seen an artist not even be able to release a song because the samples were not able to be cleared. Because of all the legal difficulties of sampling, beatmakers would try to alter samples to the point that it was 
unrecognizable from the original. In an attempt to alter the sample from the original, producers would begin flipping samples. Flipping a sample is essentially just making changes to it. There were and are many ways that producers will flip a sample. There are countless methods you can find on YouTube, but one popular one since early hip hop is called chopping. Chopping a sample is when you take bits and pieces of the sample and rearrange them in a way that sounds good. One of hip hop's earliest producers that was excellent at this was a producer by the name of Jay Dilla, who is known as one of the greatest producers of all time. Known for his sampling and unique drum pattern style, Jay Dilla was an excellent producer. This is how Dilla would chop a sample. At 40 seconds though, he says, now look what I can do with this NPC. Instead of chopping to the melody, he chopped up a handful of kicks and snares throughout the entire song, regardless of the melody on top of it. And like little puzzle pieces, he resequenced those kicks and snares to create this entirely new, dream-like song. Another legendary producer named DJ Premier also had an issue with sampling when he received a lawsuit for sampling the artist John jacques Perry. He too realized that he had to make his samples more obscure to not get in trouble. He would also begin chopping samples in his own way, similar to Jay Dilla. Producers like these would eventually inspire the next generation of producers, such as Kanye West. Kanye is famous for his sampling, and he's very good at it. Kanye has a lot of different styles when it comes to sampling. Sampling. His unique placements of samples, obscure samples, and even sampling of larger songs has been one of his many strong suits when it comes to producing. Kanye's versatile methods of sampling can really go to show how much can be done with sampling. Now of course this video is a rebuttal to the statement that I made at the very beginning of the video that sampling is lazy or not creative. However, it very much can be depending on the producer and the instrumental. Even I, with little to no producing experience, could download a sample, loop it, throw some mediocre drums on top, and call it a beat. Sampling can be done in very lazy fashions when not much is added to it. One of my favorite contemporary producers, JPEG Mafia, doesn't alter samples nearly as much as some of the aforementioned producers, but he uses them in such unique ways with creative drums and melodies layered on top of them to the point where the focus isn't on the sample, but the sample is just a cherry on top to the instrumental. And of course, when he is altering a sample, he's taking it to the extreme. <laughs> Sampling can be done very lazily, but it's pretty easy to recognize. A lot of people critique Vanilla Ice for this on his song Ice Ice Baby when he pretty much ripped the melody from Queens Under Pressure. People critique him for capitalizing on the song's familiarity. Sampling is about taking music that speaks to you, music that you enjoy, and creatively adding your own elements to it to create something entirely different. It's pretty obvious that sampling is an important part of hip hop. Sampling is like making a collage of different things that you like and putting them all together. At the end of the day, whether or not you like sampling is up to you, but all these facts really opened my eyes to see how amazing sampling can be. Let me know what you guys think about sampling in the comments below. If you like this video, I recently made a video about Tyler the Creator, who's another amazing producer and who samples quite frequently, and that video will pop up on the screen right now. Other than that, this has been Manny Balls, and I'll see you guys next time.